I'm going to show you a technique uh, that is uh, easy to utilize when using uh, the dam in the traditional method, such as passing the dam between the teeth, could be a problem. Uh, usually this occurs if you uh, have uh, a fixed bridge that's in the area that's being isolated uh, and you can't, you can't possibly get the dam between the teeth. But you can also use this to as a quick method of applying dental dam when you just don't want to deal with the interceptal material and that's called the general field isolation or some of you may know it as the split dam technique uh, but essentially we're going to use uh, the uh, frame flexidam again as I mentioned uh, the curve goes by the nose so that's the top that's the chin and you can, can arbitrarily mark this we're going to do what we call a three hole type of uh, a, a, a punch out and let me show you how that's going to work get your anchor tooth that's going to be your keyhole for your anchor tooth and then we're going to punch another hole and we're going to punch another hole here all right and what we're going to do is we're going to make a slit between the first and the second hole like that. The third hole is going to be for our clamp. Now, normally I would put uh, floss on the clamp as a safety issue, um, but uh, if you don't mind, we're going to bypass it for this particular uh, demonstration, but I always use a safety floss. Uh, so essentially uh, that is how you're going to set up your dental dam. And you're going to go to the mouth and seat your clamp on the anchor tooth. And we're going to stretch the dam all the way to the canine. And we're going to use a wedge it cord on the mesial of the canine. And then all we have to do is just worry about passing the dental floss, excuse me, the dental dam through only one contact. So again, using that knife edge concept, I normally don't lubricate it because it's really easy to to get that through and don't forget to stretch the dam off of the wings okay there you go and then the dam is rolled under so that it somewhat seals the lingual and the buccal vestibule and just simply like this there you go so that allows you to restore these teeth. If you're concerned about the matrices systems running interference with your dental dam, this is another technique that you can use. And you still have the benefit of the uh, environment being uh, somewhat clear for you and it Certainly does con isolate yeah and it, and it yeah. Ex exactly you still get some um, uh, issues uh, you could get some issues of saliva but uh, you can also use dental dam caulking material on the tissue when you roll that under and that'll help seal off that area now just for fun I'm gonna pop a ring because this is a, uh, a winged clamp with a full long wing on it and I want to go ahead and put this no, go ahead and leave that there. I'm going to rotate it a little bit. Okay. There. And I'm going to pop this sectional matrix ring on here. And we're going to see how it sits down over top of that here. So excuse my non-gloved hand here reaching in from out of frame. So rotate it down. Oh, and you can see that it's gripping on there uh, without any difficulty. So. Even in a case like that, with, with a, instead of using a wingless clamp, using a full winged clamp, the ring will seat uh, effectively in those types of scenarios. And there are some clamps where the projection on the clamp, the mesial projections, are smaller, and so um, they would run less interference as well. So you can 
select something like that as uh, in conjunction to that. Uh, also, the other reason why that's seating better is you'll notice that it's a flat jawed clamp. Oh, okay. Now remember I said flat jaws usually are better on the lower arch, but when you have to clamp the tooth that you're restoring, you're better off using a flat jawed clamp. Excellent. Be because it's less likely to cause uh, interference with your systems. Um, normally the rise, see for example, on this clamp, this curvature right here, uh, prevents the system from seating as well. And so a flat jaw clamp would work perfectly. And as you can see, it, it didn't run any interference, uh, even with the extended mesial uh, extensions on that clamp. So that's Excellent what I would point. recommend when you're using, you have to clamp the, the tooth that you're restoring. Yeah, and certainly I think <clears throat> time-saving wise, using a, a frameless rubber dam like that, um, just in a slit dam technique. That was pretty fast. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Actually, it's, it's called frame flexi dam <laughs> frame <flexi. laughs> because the, the frame is integrated in, in, into the product. But, but yes, I mean, you know, you could do this isolation. This isolation would take less than a minute to do. Actually, I could do a whole quadrant traditionally in a minute but <laughs> well, you are I don't want I don't want to brag or anything <laughs> but seriously yeah, you um, are the queen of the rubber dam, um, <laughs> this 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 is so easy to do uh, and it, if you're not that adept at applying dental dam uh, this is another option um, and it's really it, it still protects the patient uh, mm -hmm. you notice that the oral cavity is occluded uh, and so debris is not going to go down the patient's throat um, and as I mentioned this is pretty flexible so it's, it's not going to impinge as much on the facial tissues as your standard uh, traditional frame uh, integrated, not integrated, but frame with your ready cut dam. So, so. more tolerated by yeah uh, by the patient. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Excellent. So looks fantastic, Mary. Uh, well, uh, I'm happy to uh, oblige. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect.